What is bacterial vaginosis? Why does it keep coming back? How do I treat it? I'm gonna answer all those questions today, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. Dr. Jennifer Lincoln here, board certified OBGYN, and today I'm talking about BV. Why? Because I get so many questions about this topic. In fact, because I keep getting asked about this over and over again, I did include quite a few sections in my book, Let's Talk About Down There, which is available today at your local bookstore, Amazon, all those kind of places. So you can go ahead and check it out if you like. But if not, stay tuned. You've got plenty of good information coming your way. And before I get started, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the bell so you know every time I post a new video. Let's just jump right in to what is BV or bacterial vaginosis, because I'm gonna blow your mind here just a little bit and tell you that it's not actually a true infection or a true sexually transmitted infection. You're probably saying, um, but then how come I keep getting it and it's ruining my life and I get treated for it? Well, hold on a sec. Well, that's true, but here's the thing. BV is not caused by one bacteria. What it is, is it's when the good bacteria don't grow enough and the bad bacteria take over in the vagina. These are the most common ones that take over and can wreak havoc and lead to what we call bacterial vaginosis. The most common symptom that people have when they have BV is an odor that just doesn't smell right. And I've covered what's normal for vaginal discharge and what's not, so go ahead and check that out here. But let's dive into what the discharge is like when you have BV. So it tends to be that fishy odor. It can be very thin, gray, increased amount of discharge that's just different from your norm. There may be some burning associated with it, but not usually as much itching as we might see with the yeast infection. I want you to know if you have it, you're not dirty or gross. It is the number one cause of abnormal vaginal discharge. In fact, when people come to see us and their complaint is that they've got abnormal discharge, 40% of them will have BV. So you're in good company. It's not a true sexually transmitted infection, but we do know that it is more common in people who are sexually active and we don't quite know why. It could potentially be because your pH could be thrown off a little bit based on sex, but that's not the case for everybody. I wanna talk about how we diagnose BV. The most important thing is not to diagnose it on your own. And why is that? Because overdiagnosis is very common and it can lead to you getting treatment for things that you don't actually have and we're not getting to the real problem and maybe you've actually got yeast instead of BV, maybe it's chlamydia. And what happens is you end up being delayed in the right kind of diagnosis treatment. You can have bigger problems and it can be more expensive when you do finally get the diagnosis that's right. So we use something called the AMCELS criteria. And what this is, is we look at four different things. And if you have three or all four, you get a diagnosis of BV. The first one is that discharge that I described. So that thin grayish discharge. The second one is that the pH of your vagina is a little elevated. So the normal pH of a vagina is between 3.5 to 4.5. And in BV, we see it usually above 4.5. And we just use a little piece of pH paper to figure that out in the office. The third one is called the whiff test. Yes, I really did say that. <laughs> And that's, it's what it is. We see if your discharge has that fishy odor that we talked about, either just on its own or when we put it on a slide and we put a little bit of KOH solution there and then we do that and then we can smell it. I don't want you to be embarrassed if you see us doing this in the office. Like literally this is what we're trained to do and this is one way that we diagnose an infection. So it's just another day in the office for us. The fourth thing is what we see under the microscope. So what we're looking for when you have BV are the presence of something called clue cells. And you can see in this picture here, this is what it actually looks like when we put a little specimen on a slide and look under the microscope. And here's a drawing of it so it's a little easier to understand. So what we normally see are your vaginal epithelial cells looking normal, like you see here. And then when there is bacterial vaginosis, they look a little hairy or like they have spots. And that is the bad bacteria that are stuck to the outside of your normal cells. We also see a decreased number of lactobacilli, which are the good bacteria. Sometimes not all healthcare providers have a microscope in their office, so they can still do three out of the four tests, but sometimes they might collect a swab and send it to the lab for a DNA PCR test. These are okay, they're not as good as all the things I mentioned, but it's another way that we can diagnose it. Bottom line, when we see you, we actually need to do an exam to figure out what you've got going on. And I know it might not sound super fun. I do talk about what to expect at the gynecologist to help you get through it here so you can check out that card. But I want you to know that you're in charge and we just wanna to get to the bottom of this so we can help you best. Okay, we've diagnosed BV. How do we make it better? So the treatment is really about getting the balance back. So getting those bad guys a little bit decreased and getting the good bacteria, the lactobacilli, 
higher so that they can be the ones in charge again. And we do this either with medicine by mouth or medicine that we place in the vagina. And there's a few different kinds that you can see here and your provider will just work with you to figure out which one is best. It is important that you do not have sex while you're being treated for BV. That way the pH balance isn't upset again. And if you do, just be sure to use a condom. However, sometimes BV can be kind of a pain in the butt, or I guess pain in the vagina would be more accurate. Anyway, so you can have recurrent BV, which means that it comes back and that's three documented infections over 12 months. So three in one year, you qualify recurrent BV, yay. Resistant BV is that you were treated and it didn't go away. But don't worry, we can help. Here's a few different things that we might try if you fall into these camps. So we can try a repeat dose of the same medicine, either by mouth or vaginal. We can try a different kind of medicine, either by mouth or vaginal. We can do suppressive therapy where we initially treat the infection and then if it keeps coming back, we do treatment, say weekly or every few days or so for a few months to keep it from coming back. The fourth thing is we can do a combination of the medicines that I talked about, those antibiotics, with boric acid. And yes, this is where boric acid has a role. And I've gone into great detail in this YouTube up here, so go ahead and check that out. But I don't want you to leave this video today saying, well, Dr. Jen said I can use boric acid to treat BV, and I think that's what I've got going on, so I'm gonna go do that. No, we need a diagnosis first, and this is really only for those more complicated cases. I'm not saying this because I want to make it harder for you to get care. I just want you to get the right care. The fifth thing that sometimes we need to do is refer you to a specialist. And yes, there are actual specialists called vulvovaginal specialists who specialize in these types of complicated infections. And sometimes we need their help. So if that's the case for you, you can always ask about that kind of referral. Lastly, the sixth thing, vaginal probiotics. Now I often say that probiotics have no role in the vagina, but for really complicated bacterial vaginosis cases, there may potentially be a role. The data is not great, so it's not for everybody. So please do not go out and spend tons of money in probiotics because you think that's gonna help keep things happy down there. These are for like those specific cases. And I truly believe that this kind of medicine, if you're at this point, this is when a specialist can be really helpful in guiding you because not all probiotics are the same. And it's about monitoring you and seeing how you're doing and if you're actually getting better. Because if you're not, then they're not working. Now you may see lots of other things for treating boric acid, like baths and putting things in your vagina, like different essential oils and substances and suppositories and detoxes and washes. And the bottom line is no, none of those work. And a lot of them can make it really a lot worse. And I don't want that for you. If the data changes, you know I will always change. And in terms of learning more, go ahead and don't take my word for it. Check out my references and resources in the show notes below. Okay, what questions or comments do you have about bacterial vaginosis or BV? Go ahead and put them in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Go ahead and follow me on TikTok and Instagram for more. I hope you've subscribed, but if not, go ahead and do that right now if you found this content useful. And until next time, my friends, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.